the digital delight of jazz and what's more on WFDU HD2, TNAC. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to the Honey Bee. That's right. Well, I guess I'm buzzing over to California today. Yeah, that's right. We're here on WFDU 89.1. You're here with Melissa D. Gordon. That's right. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about entertainment. We got Burt Ward. Yes, that's right. The American actor and activist from the hit television series, Batman. That's right. He was known as the Cape Crusader. So we're going to uh, have a uh, little interview with him at around 1030 here on the East Coast on WFDU 89.1 with Melissa D. Gordon. That's right. That's right, you're here on the red carpet now with Melissa D. Gordon. I got a very famous guest right here. And yes, I have Burt Ward. I have Burt Ward on with me right now. And Burt, is Burt there? The very famous Burt Ward, American actor from the hit television series Batman. Good morning. Oh, wow. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you today? I'm terrific, thank you. I am so happy to have you here. Uh, on WFDU 89.1, I've been looking forward to uh, talking to you today. I am so excited that you are on air with us today, and I can't wait to talk about all the wonderful things you've been up to. You know, you were known as the Cape Crusader on Batman, and now you are known as the Cape uh, Dog Crusader? Am I right? Wrong? I don't know. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, say that I was the Cape Crusader, and now I am the Canine Crusader. Oh, the Canine Crusader. Oh, gosh. Okay. That is amazing. And you have this new dog food, and we're going to get right to that in a minute. But I'd like to uh, ask you a few questions about Batman, because I know there's so many fans out there that can't wait to hear everything that you have to say about Batman and and uh, playing the role of Robin there on Batman and everything like that. Now, um, you were cast in Batman in 1966, correct? That's cr- well, actually, 1965 is when we started uh, the uh, the show, and uh, it aired on January 12th of 1966. Was the first uh, the first show? Oh, that okay. And um, and there were two men that you you and Adam Adam West beat out, and that was Lyle Wagner and Pete Pete uh, Pete D- Dial. Diel. Diel. Wow, they, they must be they must have been bummed ever since, you know. <laughs> but uh you had a very famous, famous uh show and, and it must have you never expected that, did you? Well, uh, no one knew you know how successful Batman would be. It was a mid season replacement and uh we uh we, we knew it was something special because of all of the, the the great scripts and the comedy and the Batmobile and climbing walls and fighting villains, it was you know a show that was bigger than life. I loved it. I, it a matter of fact, when I um, when I was a kid, I used to come home and I couldn't wait to turn the TV and watch Batman. I wanted to. I I, I loved the uh, Batmobile. I, I still want to take a ride in the Batmobile, <laughs> you know, um, especially in New York City or California or anywhere. I mean, I, I would love, I'd love to take a ride in that Batmobile. But uh, that must have been fun. That must have been exciting. It, it was. It was a. It was a great show, and people loved it. You know, it was something for all ages, for children. It was the hero worship. Right. Adults, the nostalgia of the comic book, and for the uh, teenagers and college kids, it was the. Uh, campy style and kind of uh, double meanings and suggestive stuff that we put on. So everybody came away enjoying Batman. Did you ever? Did you ever think? You know, like, um, well, we know that you've you know played the role of Robin, but then did you ever think that you were going to do your own stunts? Because I heard that eventually you were going to do your own stunts, and then you know you you started to do your own stunts, correct? No, well, it's a little different than that. Actually, okay. Off the first day on Batman in the Batcave, uh, in the Batmobile, it was the very first shot. 
and uh, it was in Bronson Canyon in Hollywood. And I got in the Batmobile, and I, it was kind of dim because it's inside a dark cave. So I, I kind of could see what I thought was uh, Adam West as Batman, but it turned out as I could focus better that it was uh, someone else. And I asked who it was, and he said, I'm a stuntman. And I said, oh, well, why are you here? He said, because this is a very dangerous stunt. Oh. The studio doesn't want to take a chance of Adam West getting hurt. So they hired me as a stuntman. Oh, okay. That that that's cool. So, um, okay. So, what was your favorite stunt? Well, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm going to tell you the story. Okay. Wait a minute. If it's that, if it's that dangerous, do I have a stunt man? They said yes, you do. I said, well, well, where is he? Oh, he's over having coffee with Adam West. I said, well, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Mm. <laughs> if this is so dangerous, why am I sitting here? Mm over the assistant director and he and and i said this stuntman tells me this is really dangerous and he said yes it is and, and i said but but why why is my stuntman here he said we can't use him i said well why is that oh he doesn't look like you i said wait a minute you hired somebody to be my stuntman but now you can't use him because he doesn't look like me. Oh. <laughs> wow that's interesting <laughs> oh my out, we came out of the back cave at 55 miles an hour, came straight at the camera. The stuntman did the turn just the, exactly the way he's supposed to. Unexpectedly, mm-hmm. my door flew open. And when it flew open, it knocked the cameraman off the camera truck, knocked oh. the big arc, arc lamp, and I nearly flew out of the door. I managed to catch my finger onto the gear shift knob that pulled it out of joint. And, and then they caught everything, you know, there was dust all over the place, and they ran over, and they said, Bert, are you okay? And I said, oh, my hand is killing me. Mm. You could see my through my glove, my finger had doubled in size. And I and they said, we've got to get you to a doctor right away. And I said, okay, you know, well, where, where, where do I go, you know, to get to the car? They said, oh, well, we can't do it right now. We didn't finish the shot. I said, you did, what do you mean, I can't go now? Oh, no. We've got all these people here. We're going to have to wait till we get that shot. Well, that was 7.30 in the morning, and at noon, I left for the doctor. Mm. For f- five hours. Oh, my. And it was out of joint. So that was just to give you an idea. Oh. Unexpected events that went happened on Batman. Oh, my. <laughs> at least you give us a little bit of information there, because we like to know all the juicy details, you know, about all these shows and everything that... You know, the behind the scenes, you know, because the behind the scenes are very important. People don't realize how hard it is to work as an actor today. And, you know, any time being an actor, you know, behind the scenes, it's very hard. It's not like, you know, you just put a movie or a TV show and boom, it's together. It's a lot of hard work. And I'm sure you did a lot of have to do a lot of scenes over and over again. But that that was a good story. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. So right now we have Burt Ward from the uh, hit, t- hit television series, Batman. And uh, we, we also know that you were on. Uh, well, also, I, I also want to know what your favorite, what your favorite um, for Batman, which, which one was your favorite episode? You know, uh, I did 120 of them. Oh, boy. And every one was with a different celebrity guest star. And- mm-hmm. I loved every one of them, and working with these great stars was such a, you know, a, gr- a wonderful thing for a young actor as I was. That you know, I didn't really have a favorite because every one there was something special, and every show the costumes and the actors. I love the costumes. It was just so much fun. Yeah, the costumes, and and I I like the Joker, his costume and and everything. You know, he was so cool, and and Catwoman and. Well, there were so many. Okay, so how many different? Um, okay, there was Batman, there was Robin yourself, there was the Joker, Catwoman, and now I'm getting lost now. Oh no, there's so many villains. Uh, how many villains were there? Do you do you rem- do you remember how many villains? How many villains were? A probably about forty or fifty. Wow, that that was amazing. Who was who? Um, who was the producer of the show? Um, his name was William Dozier, and he was the executive producer. He's the one that hired me. Okay. He selected me. He said, uh, from 1,100 young actors they interviewed. Wow. It was pretty pretty stiff competition, and he said be- they hired me because, in their opinion, they said if there really was 
a Robin. I mean, not 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 just a TV show, but if the real thing existed, that they thought I would be the closest person to being what they would imagine Robin to be like. So they basically said, we want you to be yourself and be enthusiastic because what you are is exactly what we envision Robin to be. And that's what I did for 120 episodes. Wow, that that's awesome. And, you know, when you, um, when you played that part and when I was watching, I actually believed you were Robin. I did. I was, you know, being, being I, I was born um, in 1966. And when I watched, when I was, you know, about 10 or 11 or 12, I, uh, I'm probably watching the reruns then. Well, watching even watching reruns, I'm like, I would watch both of you, and I, I, I would be, I would want to get into the car. I would want to get into the screen. Um, I, I enjoyed. I, I would say, wow. And, and you know what? Then, then in part of my head, and everybody probably asks you this question every single time: is you know the suit. Wearing the suit, do people make fun of you? Do people like, oh my gosh, how, how could they put that on? And and when you put that suit on the first time, how did you feel? Did you feel like you had magic powers, or did you? I mean, did you feel like awkward? No, 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 no. It was the most uncomfortable thing I had ever put on my entire life. <laughs> and and I remember for the screen test, telling the two wardrobe men who had to help me get into that costume, as I was leaving to do the screen test, I said, I can't believe this. I said, the good news is, after 15 minutes of doing the screen test, I'm, the good news is I'll never have to wear it again. <laughs> wow. That's kind of cool, though. But it, do you still have the outfit? Yes, yes. Yeah, I do. I, I go trick-or-treating with it in private moments with my wife. Oh, that's great. Okay, so now we're going to go into what you're doing now. Because, you know, now, I recently, I know you recently were on Ellen TV, and I love Ellen. Ellen's awesome. Isn't she awesome? I love Ellen. And you were just on Ellen. And Ellen, uh, while I was watching, you were talking about your giants, uh, your gentle giants dog food. Yeah. And and it's a very special dog food. If anybody has a dog out there and, you know, wants to know more about feeding their dogs, Bert Ward can tell you everything about it because he's come up with a amazing product out there and he's going to tell us all about it right now (laughs) our dog food our gentle giants dog food first of all this is our charity my wife and i don't take any salary from this this is not about money it's about loving animals and for the last 25 years my wife and i have rescued more than 15,500 dogs every one of those dogs would have been put to death if we hadn't been there to save them Everyone we cared for, fed, provided complete medical care, and found a safe, loving home. In the course of caring for all these dogs for 25 years, we discovered a way to help them live longer. And not just live longer, but with a much better quality of life. That's awesome. Dogs living as long as 27 years, healthy, active, running around like puppies in their 20s, when no one else in the world has been able to do that. And it is a combination of three things. How you care for your dog, Mm -hmm. how you feed your dog, how you feed your dog. Our food is different than every other dog food in the world. I tell people all the time, you want to see the difference? Pick up some of the kibbles of the food you're feeding your dog currently. Rub them in your fingers and put the kibble down and rub your fingers together. Mm -hmm. Slightly greasy feeling because dog food is coated with animal fat to get dogs to eat it. Mm, Interesting. The greasy coating on dog food is very bad for dogs. I I tell people, would you take bacon grease or animal fat and pour it down your garbage disposal at home? (laughs) Of course not. It would ruin it. I said, well, then when you understand that animal fat will ruin a metal garbage disposal, what do you think is happening to the arteries and intestines of the dog you love when every single kibble is they eat right related in animal fat so that's just one thing but because our food is so different and so healthy i call it pure nutrition no no greasy coating no extra fat on the inside okay chemicals all of the stuff that's the best of the best and that allows dogs to live to their maximum potential. And by the way, our dog food, Gentle Giants, is now available 
all over the United States. Congratulations. Walmart.com, and it's on our website, GentleGiantsDogFood.com, where if you want to read about how to properly care for your dog, this special feeding program I told you about, you can read it at GentleGiantsDogFood.com. That's awesome. So um, let me let me ask you a few questions here and just interject with you. Is Okay, so one of the secret of a long lifespan for the dogs is your dog food, okay? Yes. And secondly is, okay, uh, what type of dogs, first of all, what kind of dogs do you own currently, the majority? Is it all different kind of dogs, big dogs, little dogs? We, we rescue all kinds of dogs. Okay. Are 164 different breeds. Wow. Okay. Of that 164, we rescue 45 of those breeds. Okay. Actually rescuing about one third of all the different breeds. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I the thing that I came up with, like I ran into this girl at the bagel shop and I said to her, she had this uh, pet, um, she was at this, uh, she works at a uh, pet grooming place. And I said, I'm going to be speaking to you. And I told her all about your dog food. And she's actually going to go and buy some at Walmart. And, you know, I, I was talking to her and I'm like, you know, you know, there's a, like, I have a son, he's 14 years old, and he's like, Mom, I want a dog. And I said, well, Dan, you know, I, I don't know if I can really take care of a dog. You know, I, I travel a lot. But, Mom, I want a dog. I want a dog. And, you know, I want to give him a dog, but really I can't take, take care of it. So I'm not really going to get a dog. And I said, well, why, why don't we have a program set in place with these shelters that we can actually kind of rent a dog? Well, you don't have to rent a dog. You can go to... You know, like, and take care of something for a couple months to see if I'm, you know, just able to take care of it instead of taking care of it. And then, you know, some people are inhumane. I would never do that. So, okay. No, no. Let let me just make a suggestion. Okay. Having an animal is like having a child. Right. Major responsibility. Absolutely. Not only do you have to have the time for it, but once you undertake that responsibility, you know... You, you, you don't. It's not a good idea to rent a dog. And now let me tell you why. Okay, interesting. It's an innocent, loving creature. Mm-hmm. You start caring for it. It's going to be love you. And then if you say, oh, well, you know, it didn't work out, I'll just give it back. Oh, okay. It's going to be devastated because that dog will already have been attached and start to love you and not understand why you gave it up. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. I didn't think of that. That's very, very true. It's, okay. Every, it should be for people who have the time, who mm-hmm. have the patient, and it's a major responsibility. Anytime you care for something that's living, you have to take care of it, and you have to spend time with it, because otherwise it just wastes its life waiting for you to, to love it. No, I, I think if people that have dogs, they have time for their dog. Right. Great thing to do. But it's better not to start something unless you can finish. Exactly. And, and that's kind of why I have a cat is because cats are not as full-time as a dog. Right. So, right. And, I, and I heard that you're also coming out with the cat food. Is that correct? Yes. The reason we're coming out with the cat food is it's very interesting what happened. Uh, in the last two years, we ha- uh, w- one of our cats died in, 19, in two, 2017, uh-huh. 2018. But the one that was in 2017 was 31 years old. The one that died last year was 32 years old, which is extraordinarily long life. Guess what those cats were eating? They were sneaking into the dog dog food. No, we gave them our dog food along with their regular cat food. And we found out they loved our dog food better than their cat food. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Well, but here's one thing. Cats do need yeah. other nutritional items. So. Mm-hmm our dog food, which they love and which kept us, kept the, those two cats alive incredibly long life, we're, and we're modifying that to make it perfect for cats. So when we come out with our cat food, it'll already be a food that is designed to help cats live. That's awesome. I, that, that's, that is so awesome. That is so, that is just so awesome. I can't even say awesome as much because, you know, I just had a cat, and I, unfortunately, she had passed away and she had diabetes and the doctor said well what did you feed her and I said well I fed her mostly kipples you know I thought kipples was good I fed her some wet food but 
I didn't realize the care that I needed to give my cat. It was wet food and dry food together. I did not know that. Nobody, nobody educated me on that until eventually when the vet asked me, uh -huh. what do you feed your cat when it was too late? And unfortunately, you know, and I had to feed, I actually had to go uh, to the pharmacist and actually uh, give my cat diabetic medication. So, you know, I, I think that nutrition is very important for animals. It's just like human beings. You don't have the right nutrition. You're not going to do well. I understand. But, but it wasn't because you gave her dry only. That's not the problem. Okay. Then there's the food that you gave her was not the food that would help her stay living longer. Mm -hmm. We have kibble and we also have canned food as well. We have both. Okay. But, but it's the quality of the product. We focus on what is most helpful for the animal, not what is easiest to make money with. Okay. And so, you, you know, it's like anything else. If, if a company is making money selling something, they're obviously buying it cheaper than they're selling it. And, you know, if some companies want to make more money, they make it using the cheapest ingredients and try to sell it for the most expensive price. In our case, because we're a charity, we, and we don't make any profit from this food at all. We mm -hmm. sell it at our cost. That our interest is in the health of the animal, not in trying to make money with it. This is incredible. And I and by the way, I do like like your whole the whole aspect of like your marketing and how you market your product is very amazing. Matter of fact, I I said to um, I have my producer here, and he. He's here in the house with me, and I'm going to have him say hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so, and, and he's in high school, so I helped train him here at WFDU. So, I, uh, yeah, like all the, all the um, different today, like your packaging and everything. And I was telling him, I'm like, wow, look at the packaging. It's very cool. It's like I, I almost want to eat the food. <laughs> I almost want to eat the food. <laughs> That's what I was saying because I'm like, your packaging looks cool. And it almost looks so, like, in a way, like the Batman in a way. So, like, how did you come up with the packaging, by the way? Well, what, what we did is that we believe that if you see a bag of dog food, that the, the images on the bag should be the dogs that actually eat the food, not some airbrushed photo of a dog that obviously if it's an airbrushed photo, it couldn't even be alive. Right. Everything on our bag is exactly what is the truth. So if we say veterinarian recommended, as we do on our bag, we show a photo of the veterinarian. We show his own words of why he believes our food is so superior to other dog foods. It's, it's so uh, that's not what you see on dog food bags. It's just a picture of a dog, an airbrushed photo, and, and it doesn't really give you information. We believe in providing complete information. And also on our website, GentleGiantsDogFood.com. Thank you. They can come and watch videos. They can learn how to properly care for the dog. Great. They can ask questions. They can write to us. Everything we do is to help people care for their animals so their animal can live an extra five or ten years longer and so much healthier. And this is all charity that you're giving back. Yes, nothing. We don't take any money from it. People say to us sometimes, oh, well, I know what you do. You, you sell your food and you take the profits and you donate it to your rescue. And I said, no, we sell it for what it costs us. We do, there's no money to be made here. We sell it as inexpensively as possible. And why do we do that? Because we know there are millions of people throughout the United States and Canada who love their dogs. And some of these people maybe are older, their kids have grown up and moved on, and that dog is the only thing they have left in life. And maybe they're on a limited budget. So what we've done to make it affordable is to sell it as inexpensively as possible so everybody can afford to have a chance for their dog to live as long as 27 healthy, active years. That's favorite. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my um, Tomas. He wants to ask you a question. So, T Tomas, go ahead. Uh, so you're talking about how much a commitment is to raise a dog, but I heard that you raise almost 50. Is, what would you say is the hardest part about that? What we've had in the last 25 years, 15,500 dogs in our home with us. At all times, we have a minimum of 50 dogs in our house. We know what it takes to care for dogs. Wow. And so and that's why I stress the fact that it is a wonderful thing if you have the time 
right. to care for an animal and to love it. Because, you know, a dog, uh, and, and it, just about any animal, they look to a human being because they realize only the human can care for it. There's, in this today's world, a dog can't go find food by itself. It can't get medical care by itself. So they depend on us, and, and they love us incredibly. A dog loves you unconditionally, no matter if you had the best day at work or, the, you know, or a tough day. Mm-hmm. Because you provide love to them, and that's all they want is love. Okay. You have another question, Tomas? Um. Okay. So here, before we wrap this, before we wrap up today, I, I wanted to talk... We're gonna we're gonna be out to California in a couple more couple more weeks. We're gonna be at Roger Neal's Oscar viewing dinner. I'm so excited. But before I close, where can we before we talk about you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be out there and I'm gonna be saying hello to you and a couple other um, wonderful people like yourself. Uh, before we close the show, would you like to add anything, Bert? Well, I just want to say that for for people who want to learn more. For people that love their dogs and would love to have them for an extra five or ten years longer, please come to our website, GentleGiantsDogFood.com, and, and, and read the information. See what we've done. Watch the videos. We also have a Facebook page, Good. Gentle yeah. Giants Dog Food and Products, and we have thousands of people who, who, who give their stories and show their photos and videos on our Facebook page and explain how our food and the way we tell people to care for dogs has helped their dogs live much healthier and happier. All of this is for charity. We love animals, and, and, and I would like to tell you that in our opinion, you know, life is the most precious commodity in the world. And when you have a dog that loves you unconditionally, you want to give it the best love and the best care possible. That's right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on you know, WFDU 89.1. I really enjoyed speaking with you today, and, you know, you had a very amazing information. I'm really, you know, happy that, actually, you know, like, I'm happy, not only happy talking to you, but, you know, I really, you know, the charity and the shelter, that that's just really awesome. Really awesome. Thank you, my dear citizen. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, well, I hope you have an amazing day today, and I, I guess I'm going to be seeing you out at Roger's um, at Roger Neal's Oscar View and Dinner. I'm forward to meeting you, and my wife, Tracy, will be with me. Oh, so I, I can't wait to meet you, and I can't wait to, you know, watch some more about your charity and about, you know, your gentle giant dog food. And we're going to look, look at it on Facebook, and we're going to watch a little bit on YouTube. And uh, we're just going to follow up with you. So we thank you so much for being on WFDU, and thank you. Thank you, Bert. Well, thank you, citizens. Yay! Thank you. Okay, well, have a great day. And um, have a great day in sunny California. And send us some warm weather because we're freezing over here. (laughs) All right. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Digital delight of jazz and what's more on WFDU HD2.